On this episode of Our Own Devices, Cow Tools. Hello everyone and welcome to another video on Our Own Devices. I'm Jean Messier and today we are having a look at a fascinating piece of veterinary equipment. Now, on this channel, I've previously covered a number of medical instruments, as well as at least one piece of agricultural equipment, but this is the first time I've covered an item that falls under both categories. This is a set of injectors manufactured by Park Davison Company for vaccinating livestock against something called blackleg. Also known as black quarter, quarter evil, or quarter ill, blackleg is a severe bacterial infection that commonly affects cattle, sheep, goats, and other ruminants under around two years of age. It is most commonly caused by Clostridium chauvae, but can also be caused by other species including Clostridium septicum, Clostridium sordelli, and Clostridium novi. These belong to the same genus as Clostridium tetanae, which causes tetanus or lockjaw, and Clostridium botulinum, which causes botulism food poisoning and is the source of botulinum toxin, aka Botox. If you want to learn more about the fascinating history of those diseases, I have written comprehensive videos about them over on Today I Found Out. Links in the description. Now, all members of the Clostridium genus are rod-shaped gram-positive anaerobic bacteria, meaning they thrive in low oxygen conditions. And when growing conditions are suboptimal, they can form extremely tough spores, which can persist in the environment for a very long time and are resistant to extreme temperatures and various chemicals, making them very difficult to eradicate. Indeed, the spores of Clostridium chauvae are very commonly found in soil where they can come into contact with grazing animals and they enter the animal's body via one of two routes, either through minor cuts and abrasions, such as, say, a cow scraping against a barbed wire fence, or through ingestion. In the former case, the bacteria multiply directly in the anaerobic environment of the wound, releasing exotoxins that cause the surrounding flesh to necrotize, as well as a large volume of gas that builds up under the skin. Hence why this presentation is often known as gas gangrene. This was once a common affliction of soldiers, most infamously during the First World War, when it typically resulted from shrapnel wounds becoming contaminated with soil containing clostridium spores. In the second case, the bacteria migrate from the animal's digestive system to major muscle masses, such as in the hind legs, hence the name black leg. And here, once again, they rapidly multiply, causing the tissue to necrotize. And this infection is extremely aggressive, with symptoms of appearing within two to three days of initial infection, and death often following in as little as 12 hours. And unfortunately, antibiotics are typically ineffective against this infection, meaning that the only protection is prevention, either by burning pasture land to get rid of the Clostridium spores, or vaccination using a kit like this. So let's take a closer look at this, and let me show you how this works. So inside this kit, we have three different injectors along with a bunch of accompanying documentation, which I will get to in a minute. This injector is just a regular hypodermic syringe and is designed to inject a liquid vaccine serum known as blackleg aggressin. Now, aggressin is a defunct term for a hypothetical substance excreted by pathogens which increase their virulence, for example, by interfering with the host's immune system. In this context, however, it appears to be referring to the modern concept of an antigen, which is a substance that induces an immune response in the host. And indeed, the whole principle of a vaccine is to expose the host to a pathogen-specific antigen in order to prime its immune system so it can recognize and fight off that pathogen in the future. So, aggressin was manufactured from the bodies of animals that had been deliberately infected with pure Clostridium chauvae cultures and then subsequently died. This material was ground up, heated to sterilize it, and then filtered and mixed with preservatives in order to create a clear serum that was free of all the remnants of live and dead bacteria and spores and contained only the antigens. And this could then safely be used to inoculate very young, vulnerable animals without the risk of accidentally infecting them with blackleg. For my money, however, these two other injectors in the kit are far more interesting. One has a handle made of nickel-plated steel and the other of black plastic, likely Bakelite, but otherwise they are identical in design and operation. Now, if I pull the safety cap off this one, it reveals a whopping big needle, a full 3 millimeters or 1 eighth of an inch in diameter, and inside this is a retractable spring-loaded plunger which can be drawn back and locked in this slot and released with the flick of the thumb. And these injectors were designed for use with proprietary solid vaccine pellets known as black legoids, which were little spheres only around 2 
2 millimeters in diameter. And these were sold in glass vials of 10 doses each. And unfortunately, I don't have an example of that to show you. But thankfully, one of the documents that came with this kit includes a handy illustration. Now, black Lagoids came in two different strengths, regular and double. The double strength were the most highly recommended, but they had to be administered in two doses spaced 12 days apart. However, if you happen to have an extremely large herd of animals spread out over a large area of pasture, you might not be able to vaccinate them fast enough in order to keep that schedule. In that case, you administered a single dose of regular strength to every animal, thus conferring upon the herd at least a degree of immunity. Now, immunization was supposed to begin as soon as an animal was able to eat forage, with follow-up vaccines, boosters, being administered every three months up until the age of six months, and then every six months up to the age of two and a half, after which most animals become fairly resistant to blackleg. Now, according to the instructions, to use these injectors, you first sharpened and honed the needle, if necessary, and then sterilize the entire instrument by boiling it in water for 20 minutes. Meanwhile, you prepared the black lagoids for use by lining the bottom of a shallow tin with Vaseline or lard and dropping the pellets in so that they didn't roll around, but they were easy to grab and put into the injector. Once everything was ready, you sterilized the injection site using Cresso dip, composed mainly of coal tar distillates, and traditionally used to prevent and treat various veterinary afflictions, including fleas, hog cholera, foot and mouth disease, and mange. Finally, you drew back and locked the plunger on the injector, and dropped a black lagoid pellet down the bore of the needle. Now, black lagoids were designed to be injected just under the skin, so the instructions recommend lifting up a flap of loose skin near the animal's shoulder, jamming the needle in, and then releasing the plunger in order to deposit the pellet just under the skin. The pellet would then naturally dissolve and be absorbed into the animal's body, conferring full immunity after around 12 days. Now, the advantage of this system was supposed to be that you didn't have to fiddle around with measuring out and administering doses of liquid vaccine, and I can certainly see that, though I'd imagine that having to deal with these tiny 2 millimeter pellets out in the field could also be something of a hassle. Anyway, that's it for the injectors themselves. Let's actually have a look at the documentation that came with the kit, which to my mind is actually a lot cooler. Here we have an enormous brochure which explains what black leg is, the threat it poses, and how to protect against it, lists the company's related products, and of course includes many testimonials from satisfied customers. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, this kit was manufactured by Park Davison Company, which was an American pharmaceutical company founded by Dr. Samuel P. Duffield, Hervey C. Park, and George S. Davis in 1866. Among other accomplishments, the company pioneered the Scoville scale used to rate the spiciness of hot peppers, a topic I've also written about for Today I Found Out. They were also among the earliest manufacturers of Dr. Jonas Salk's polio vaccine. In 2000, Park Davis was acquired and became a subsidiary of pharmaceutical giant Pfizer. Park Davis was originally founded and headquartered in Detroit, but had branch offices in cities across North America and the world, including Walkerville, Ontario, up here in Canada, which distributed this particular kit. Now, unfortunately, I haven't been able to determine exactly when this kit was manufactured and sold. The earliest references to this design that I can find date from 1910, while some of the documents in here appear to bear the revision date of 1929. However, that list of branch offices may provide an important clue. See, the location of the Russian branch office is listed as Petrograd. Now, this city was founded as St. Petersburg in 1703 and only renamed Petrograd in 1918 following the Bolshevik Revolution. However, just six years later, in 1924, it was renamed Leningrad after recently deceased Bolshevik leader Vladimir Lenin, a name which stuck until the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 when it once again reverted to St. Petersburg. Thus, my best guess is that this was manufactured sometime between 1918 and 1924. That said, however, copywriters often take many years to catch up with world events. Plus, as a cost-saving measure, pamphlets like this are often reprinted unedited for years, if not decades, so long as the information within remains more or less valid. So it's quite possible that this was manufactured and sold far outside of that six-year window. Anyway, also included in this kit are three smaller leaflets, one describing the manufacture and use of Black Lagoids vaccine pellets, one describing the use of the Black Lagoids injector and listing free booklets distributed by Park Davis, and yet another describing the manufacture and use of liquid Black Leg Aggressin vaccine. There's also a small quality guarantee slip, 
and three coupons, one of which was included in every package of Black Lagoid pellets. If you redeemed 10 such coupons, along with 50 cents to Park Davis, you would receive a free injector. Now, of course, black leg remains a serious problem for farmers, but today combination vaccines are available to simultaneously protect against multiple species of Clostridium bacteria, specifically Clostridium chauvi, Clostridium hemolyticum, Clostridium novi, Clostridium perfrigens, Clostridium septicum, Clostridium sordelli, and Clostridium tetany. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I hope you found that interesting. I had actually never heard of black leg or any of its treatment methods prior to coming across this kit in an antique store. So that was a really fun one to research, and I very much enjoyed bringing you the results of that research. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Another video where we'll look at yet more fascinating medical equipment and other devices just like this one. Until then, I'm Jin Messi from Our Own Devices. Have a great day.